as I said, Australians have good reason to be proud of Rolf Harris. So why don't you bring him out here? Here's Rolf Harris. Okay. <laughs> I just noticed something, you always do it to me. You come out, brand new suit, different shirt, the whole thing, cup those shoes. Well, uh, <laughs> you, don't think, you don't think that he paints much, do you? Look at him. You've got to have some concession to... Oh That's bloody new vinyl, you can't get it off. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure can't. Or something like that, yeah. Well, I'm ju I was just thinking back this afternoon to the first time that we ever met each other. I had the, it was a very weird experience for me. One of your first shows. Wasn't yeah, it, over here? it was about 1965. Yeah. John Collins was producing for me at that time, and he said, I've got this guy I want you to meet. He's very Australian. Uh, Do you remember Rogers? Remember Rogers. I oh, that was a, a word you told me. Yeah, you, that's yeah. right, yeah. He was just doing the, it was his, one of his first shows in Australia. About the fifth show in Australia. Was it? Oh. Yeah. Anyway, I said, there's all sorts of expressions that you should know like Australian words like, for example, rochers. Do you know the word rochers? And you went, rochers? <laughs> I said, yeah, it's, um, let me put it into a sentence for you. Um, if you kids don't stop that, rochers won't be allowed back here again. <laughs> <laughs> and you went, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I may do it again, even now. You, know. <laughs> you travel an awful lot. Uh, and, you know, like, being wholly and solely, I mean, no one would ever consider you being anything less than just Australian. Uh, do you have language difficulties in the United States? I know a lot of the fellows here do when they get over there. People don't understand that. Um, it's the speed of delivery, I think. Um, mm. I mean, I've had some terrible things. The first show I ever did in the States was uh, in Seattle. Mm. I was working in Vancouver and doing great guns there, and the, and the guy booked me to go over the border into the U.S. for a Shriners convention. Oh, my God. Now, I knew nothing about the Shriners conventions. Pretty wild, huh? And they were a much older group than I was, yeah. and... It's the, it was the most embarrassing thing in my life. I'm doing a show, and when I get nervous, I get faster and faster. Yeah. And they were all saying, what'd he say, what'd he say? You know, what'd he say, what'd he say? Finally, a man stood up in the middle and said, in the middle of a song, I'm doing the wild colonial boy, and he said, young man, we just don't understand a word you're saying, and I think we'd better call it a day. And they all got up and walked out. <laughs> One of them's got to be frightening. That yeah. embarrassing, yeah. They didn't know what I was on about. Well, this show goes to America now, of course, and uh, and uh, there'd be. I didn't know that. Yeah, Is this going kind of to the states? Yeah, this would be one of the ones going. <laughs> well, on. listen, I've I've been given a a duty any time I see you to pass on good wishes from an old school friend of yours in New York, Central Park, New York. He lives uh, just on the edge of the park there, Central Park West. A fellow called Victor M. Lynn. Used Victor to play Lynn. piano. Trombone. Trombone. Yeah. Oh, he yeah, may have done piano. No, as he well. did. I think he played piano in those days. Vic, what is he? Vic Lynn. Well, excuse me. Where they yeah. I have no, no idea. Listen, what? they're great friends there. Yes. Hello, Vic Lynn. Where's Vic and Jim? Well, he won't see you till September, but you can wait. Hello, in anyway. September, anyway. Yes. It'll yeah. be wonderful weather. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Know, I didn't notice. Uh, the reason I started to say about the show going to America is that I've noticed that humor is sort of international. I remember one time seeing you at the Opera House, and you did a very funny Irish joke about. Um, it was something about a pram, a oh, yeah, baby yeah. in a pram. A young couple come out of the supermarket in Ireland. Yeah. And they walk along and the wife looks down and she said, My God, Michael, it's the wrong child. He said, Shut up, it's a better pram. So what I'm saying is... What I, meant, what, I, what I meant by bringing that up is that you, when you go to America, of course, all the Irish jokes that they do in England are Polish jokes. And when you get to other countries, of course, everybody does those very same jokes on some other nationality yeah. somewhere along the way. But it's, it's, it's funny. Um, I think the Irish, you know, I did a couple of tours over in Ireland, and you get over there, all the jokes about Ireland and the jokes about the Irish. Mm -hmm. It's all real. <laughs> I mean... No, oh, hang on. Really? Yes. No, it is. Um, because they have another way of thinking than us. A completely different way of thinking. Time doesn't mean anything much to them. Um, 
they say they'll meet you at two o'clock and they turn up at twenty past five <laughs> and they say you you know we've got a bus for the band and and they get there at twenty past five and they ring it up to see where they can hire a bus you know they haven't right. actually done that yet but right or just we'll be all right on the night sir really. <laughs> there's some marvelous stories of it i mean my first time in ireland uh, i got there and this fellow was promoting me all around touring and he said uh, you've got a free night tonight but if it's all right with you, there's a program, a radio program that's heard all over Ireland, and it would be great if you'd go on that program. It's called the Liam Nolan Hour, and it's on every day from 11 o'clock to a quarter past one. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to laugh, and he said, what, what are you laughing about? And I said, Is that, was that a joke? And he said, what do you mean a joke? And I said, well, the Liam Nolan Hour, <laughs> from 11 o'clock to a quarter past one, right. and he said, Oh, I see. Now, what do you mean? No, it was called the Liam Nolan Hour, and it became so popular they extended it. But they called it Lunchbox, but nobody remembers that name. But he right. couldn't see anything funny in it. He didn't <laughs> think it was funny at all. <laughs> Is it, what is it? Just their approach to life and the way they look oh, at things? Yeah, I mean, uh, they say things. A, a porter in the hotel, he picked up my bags, I'd signed the register, and he set off walking and he said, Follow me, sir. I'll be right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'd been there that long that I knew what he meant. Right. <laughs> but I couldn't believe he'd said it. It was like one of those lovely things. What did you say? That's got to be lovely. He turns his face like that. And we were, we were in, um, do, you know, do you know Val Dunican? Yeah, sure, Val? yeah. The, the very, he's got a sort of Perry type uh, yeah, voice. Though, lovely, yeah, lovely, easygoing Irish guys from Waterford. And we were down at Waterford doing a concert there. And at the end of the concert, we had three days break. We had a Saturday, Sunday, and Monday off. Mm. And then we went on to Kerry or somewhere, I can't remember. But one of the guys in the band was a Dublin lad and he wanted to get back and stay with his family. So he, he phones up the, the uh, railway information thing. Now this is the guy in information. This is a man in the office to give information about the railways. Right. And the fellow says to him, he was also an Irish bloke, he said, could you tell me what, uh, what time the first train is from Waterford to Dublin in the morning? Mm. And the information fellow said, Oh, now, what would a young fellow like yourself be wanting to leave a lovely place like Waterford to go to Dublin for? He's the guy giving the information he wants. He's giving him a sales pitch about staying. He doesn't want him to leave. Yeah, right? it's, it's good, yeah. isn't it? What about kids? You, uh, you know, like I watched those kids shows that you did out of England, and you did some astounding things. There. You had one amazing character that you had where it was actually you in a basket on an old man's back, but it was oh. all you, that thing I saw. But surely there must be gems that come out of kids' mouths for Ralph Harris. Uh, well, I've had some really funny things happen with kids. I mean, I, I did a program years ago on television from, uh, from Birmingham in England. And uh, this was 1958, one of my first ones. And I was running a games program with the kids. And I mm. said, now, in this game, this is quick word association. For example, if I said roast beef and, and the kids all went. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. You've heard of that, haven't you? And they went, no. <laughs> They all had adenoids, you know. Right. Those who didn't went and had, had operations to get some. You know, sort of. And uh, so I said, well, roast pork and apple sauce. You've heard of roast pork with apple sauce? And the kids all went, no. <laughs> and it was live television in those days, you know, no telerecording yeah. in England. And uh, the clock was ticking away with one of those audible second hands that goes, <laughs> and your heart starts going boom boom and you think I can't think of anything and my head's going whack I've got nothing in my brain at all and the man's going like this behind the camera and it's you know and I suddenly thought cops and robbers okay every kid in the world's played cops and robbers so I said here we go then cops and all the kids went <laughs> except one little kid got the brainwave and said sources <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I, honestly, I went, uh, I, di I didn't know what he was talking about because yeah. my head's going that way and he goes off at a tangent there. It's like, what did yeah. he say? Listen, we gotta, we're going to go for a break, but when we come back, you're going to be doing this number for us now. This is song I understand was a big hit for you out west uh, yeah, yeah. early this year. Uh, it's, it's a weird sort of situation in Australia to explain it to, to the American audience that... Uh, um, to give you an idea of this, it was a tremendous hit in West Australia because it's a song about West Australia. But people in, in the rest of Australia wouldn't play it. They say it's too parochial, you know. It's yeah, too, too yeah. parochial. 
we'll stick to real Australian songs like Las Vegas and Surf City USA and let's right. go to New Mexico. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. You know? And this is it. You're going to be doing this song for us as soon as we come back from the break. Okay, Ralph Harris with this number, uh, Back to Western Australia, right after this break.